Bonjour tout le monde. Today we are going to be practicing our speaking skills for Delft Brim A1.1. Let's start now. Here you can see questions and answers that you can use in your Delft Brim A1.1 speaking skills test. Now, we will be looking into each and every sentence from here. Let's start. Let's start with bonjour. Bonjour, salut. Bonjour means hello, good morning, or good day. And when you say salut, it's hi, hello. So you can use either of them while you start your speaking skills with the teacher or the examiner. And once you say that, the next question will be como ça va? Either you ask the teacher como ça va, or just wait for the teacher to ask you. So when they say como ça va? which means, how are you? Then you would say, ça va bien, merci, which means, I'm fine, thank you. And then you would ask them back, et vous? Et vous means, and what about you? And you? So they would definitely say, ça va super bien, which means, I'm really well. Merci, which is, thank you. Or they can just say, ça va bien, like you said. So this is how the dialogue will go between you and the examiner. And then we have the next question. Comment vas-tu? Comment vas-tu? Comment vas-tu means how are you again? Okay, it's the same thing like comment ça va? But there is a little change in here. Comment vas-tu means uh, how are you? And it is formal. Comment allez-vous? Comment allez-vous? The other one. That is also very formal. When you say como va tu, um, you usually tell this to people of your age or people younger to you in a formal scenario. But como, como tale vous, you would say to people who are elder to you, you would say como tale vous, or to strangers who you don't know, you could always say como tale vous when you meet them for the first time. Um, and the answer to that will be je vais bien. Je vais bien, which means I'm fine. And then you can say, je vais bien, merci, which is I'm fine, thank you. So there are three kinds of questions that they can ask you. They can either say, como ça va, for which you will say, ça va bien, merci. And then you ask them back, et vous? And the other thing is that they might tell, comment vas-tu? Or comment allez-vous? And then you would say, je vais bien. And when you're asking them back, Instead of evu, you can also say como talibu or como vachu, that's fine. Um, the next question is chuapia, that's very casual. They could ask you, are you fine? Are you okay? So chuapia, chuvapia, and then you would say, oui, je vais bien, merci, je vais bien, merci, which means yes, I'm fine, thank you. Because here the question is, are you fine? Are you okay? So your answer should be yes, I'm fine. Thank you. So it's oui, je vais bien, merci. All right. And then your next question will be comment tu t'appelles? Comment tu t'appelles means what's your name? And then you would say je m'appelle and you would say your name. So for example, if they ask me, I would say je m'appelle Jennifer. Uh, comment ça s'écrit? So the next question will move on to comment ça s'écrit, which means how do you spell your name or how do you write your name? So they can ask either of these questions. Como sa secret? Or tu peux appeler ton nom? Tu peux appeler ton nom? Which means can you spell your name? So over here what you're supposed to do is that you start your sentence with sa secret. And then I've given all the French alphabet over here for help. A, B, C, D, E. F, G, H, E, G, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now that you know how to pronounce the entire alphabet, or if you do not know, you can always pause this uh, video and try to pronounce it after me. All right, whenever needed. So... Uh, let me, you know, pronounce my name, uh, just for example. 
Then if someone asks me come on should I be allowed to show my belle Jennifer and if they say come on that's agree or tu peux appeler ton nom if they say one of that then I would say that's agree J E N E F E R So I would say this so I want you to practice these letters with your name so it's going to be very comfortable and smooth in your speaking skills you'll be able to smash it with your name your spellings in french and that's going to be quite easy all right so practice the alphabet well for your name especially now let's move on to our next slide here we will practice our countries and nationalities Uh, especially nationalities in french you have a masculine one and a feminine one and we're going to practice how to say it okay so our first sentence is this mon pays c'est la france et toi suppose your teacher asks you my country is france and what is yours so you would have to say your country name uh, so you would start it like this mon pays my country say it is and then if it's india you would say mon pays say land land suppose your country is pakistan then you would say le pakistan le pakistan if it's egypt then you would say egypt egypt so you would say mon pays say l'egypte suppose if it's um algeria mon pays say l'algerie l'algerie If it's uh, Lebanon, then you would say, "Mon pays c'est le Liban, le Liban." And if it's Morocco, "Mon pays c'est le Maroc, le Maroc." Then if it's the uh, United States, "États-Unis, États-Unis." If it's Belgium, then it's Belgique. Then Japan, Chine for China. For Korea, it's Korea. Korea, Italy, Italy, Italy. Then for Spain, España, España. For England, Inglaterra, Inglaterra. And for Philippines, you would say Filipina, Filipina. So it would be mon pays c'est les Philippines because Philippine here of the country is plural, the Philippines. So you would say mon pays c'est les Philippines, and then Syria is Syri, and then uh, Sri Lanka is the same Sri Lanka. Um, so over here, if you see the next question is où habites-tu or tu habites où? It means where do you live? See, all of us live in Dubai, so we would say j'habite à Dubai. We would say j'habite à Dubai. Okay. That's for everybody. For everybody, that's the same. Then the next question is, quelle est ta nationalité? Quelle est ta nationalité? Which means, what's your nationality? So you would say, je suis, I am. And then, if you're an Indian, you would say, je suis Indien. And then, if you're an Indian girl, then you would say, je suis Indien, Indien. If if you're from Pakistan, then you would say, Pakistani. Pakistanese, Egyptian, Egyptian, Algerian, Algerian, Libanese, Libanese, Moroccan, 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 American, American, Belge, Belge is the same for both of them, Japonese, Japonese, Chinois, Chinoise for China. Chinese, okay. Um, then Korean, Korean, Italian, Italian, Espanol, Espanol. The pronunciation is the same for this, for both masculine and feminine. Next one is English. It's Anglais, 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 Anglais. Then uh, for Filipino, masculine is Filipin, 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 Filipin. Syrian is Syrian, 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 Syrian. Next one is Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka. Just keep that in mind. If in case I did not um, 
give your country in here and you don't know how to pronounce it. So when I come to your next lesson, just let me know and I will help you with it or just look up uh, on the internet and find the pronunciation for your country and for your nationality. It's really, really important. All right. And then the next thing would be they would ask you uh, where do you come from. So it can be either my country is this and what is yours. So they're asking your country or they could even ask where do you come from. For both the question, the answer is the same All right, because you're going to say your country. And then quel langue parles-tu, which means which language do you speak? We all speak English, so you can start by saying je parle anglais, which means I speak English, je parle anglais, and then we speak a little French. If you speak more French, then you can just say en français, but if you speak a little French because you're just doing your Delta in A1.1 and you're a beginner, you could say un peu français. Un peu français means a little French. A is and, and then you can add your um, your native language over there, whichever language you speak. If you speak, um, you know, Italian or Spanish or English, uh, sorry, not English, uh, Spanish or English or uh, Chinese or Japanese or any language that you speak, you can add that over there for yourself. Okay, so uh, that's it about the country nationalities. Um, so, again, uh, to just remind you, Whenever they ask you for nationality, remember to say, if you're a boy, say the masculine one. If you're a girl, say the feminine one. Just keep that in mind very, very careful. Okay, be careful with that. Um, the reason why I gave, you know, the same kind of questions, the meaning is the same, but it's asked in a different way is that they might end up asking you one of them. You should not get confused, and that's why. All right. Okay, so let's move on to our next part. So over here, we are talking about the months of the year and the numbers from 1 to 31 because every month has date, which starts from number 1 to number 31. So um, some, of course, have 30 days and some have 28 and 29. So uh, just in case you were born on one of those months and one of these dates, you need to know how to say it. So I'm going to first of all um teach you i know you already know numbers and months but i'm just going to reiterate once again just just focus on this and try to uh, repeat it after me and practice it and especially you need to know how to say your birth date or your birthday or when you were born so all these three questions that are that are given here it all means the same the answer is same but the questions look different i'll tell you why the reason? Yeah, the reason for that. Tu es né quand? Tu es né quand? Tu es né quand means when were you born? Okay, so you're going to say your birthday. Then, quelle est la date de naissance? Quelle est la date de naissance? Which means what is your date of birth? What is your date of birth? And the next question is, c'est quand ton anniversaire? Which means um, when is your birthday? When is your birthday? So, in for all these three questions, you're going to say the same answer. Um, but the thing is, the sentence starter is different. If you remember, ju just memorize these sentence starters. If you remember, say them. But otherwise, you can just say your birthday. Never mind. Okay? Um, so, let's start with the numbers now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So just practice these numbers. Um, even if you didn't practice all these numbers, at least your birthday. All right. Now let's move on to the months. Janvier, février, mars, avril, mai, juin, juillet, août, septembre, octobre, novembre, décembre. Okay. So you're going to say the date and the month 
also the year. Okay, so uh, let's do this. Um, if you, for example, my birthday is the second of December. The second of December. So this is how I will say: Je suis né le, je suis né le, de décembre, and then I will say the year. Okay, so for example, if you were born in two thousand and um, let's keep as two thousand and twelve, then you would say the mil douze, the mil douze. If you were born in two thousand and thirteen, you would say the mil treize, the mil treize. If, in case you were born in two thousand and eleven, then you would say the mil. Onze, onze, All right. So, two thousand and onze for two thousand and eleven, two thousand and twelve is two thousand and twelve, two thousand and thirteen is two thousand and thirteen. If in case you were born in two thousand and fourteen, then it's two thousand and fourteen, two thousand and fourteen. Just keep this in mind and practice it. Okay, practice makes a person perfect. If you're going to practice this regularly, constantly, until the day of your exam, you're going to be able to do really, really well. You're going to smash the speaking skills. Okay, let's move on to the next one now. Oh, before we move on, let me say the other sentence starters as well, so you know how to pronounce them. So, quelle est la date de naissance? What is the date of your birth? I mean, date of birth. So then you say ma date de naissance, c'est le, and then you would say, then c'est quand ton anniversaire? Mon anniversaire? My birthday? Say le, and then again you would say the date and the month. All right. Okay. Now let's move on to the next one. Over here we're going to talk about the school subjects that we like or dislike. So let's talk about um, the questions first. Qu'est-ce que tu aimes, which means what do you like? It's a very general question. You don't have to necessarily say the subject that you like. You can always say uh, the sports. Activity that you like, or any other activity that you do at home that you like, or any food that you like, you can you, you can say anything, all right. But here it's better to say the school subjects. So um, uh, your options for describing why you like it will be um, you know lesser and it's better, all right. So when they ask you qu'est-ce que tu aimes, what do you like, you just say j'aime, which is I like, and then say one of the school subjects. So first of all, let me, you know, say the pronunciation for all these school subjects so you can practice it along with me. Uh, les matières scolaires, which is the school subjects. Um, the matière is subject. Okay, just keep that in mind when they say that matière. You need to remember that you have to talk about your school subject. Okay, uh, l'éducation physique. I know many of you love l'éducation physique, which is the PE class. Les mathématiques, les mathématiques, maths, les arts plastiques, art, la musique, it says it all, music, le français, French, la technologie, we don't have la technologie right now in our lessons, so you can skip that, l'informatique, l'informatique, l'informatique is your ICT, your computer science class, les sciences is the sciences, L'histoire is history and géographie is geography. I don't think so. You have it um, right now in primary, so you can just go with the sciences and just skip the histoire and géographie. Uh, but if you still want to use it, you can definitely no problem. L'anglais is English. L'espagnol is Spanish. L'allemand is German. L'italien is Italian, and uh, you have Le Mandarin. So. Um, in fact, we don't learn any of these languages other than English and French. So just try to, um, you know, just keep with English and French alone. All right. But if you would like to say that I like Spanish, I want I like Spanish subject or you know German subject, you can still say that to them. But if they ask you any question on that, then you'd be wondering what to say. So just keep with the subjects that you're already doing in in the lesson. I mean, in the in the school. And then the next question is, tu aimes les sciences? Now, this is a question where they're asking, they're saying a school subject, you're asking whether you like it or not. So it's always better to say you like it. So you can say, oui, j'aime les sciences. Uh, then they would ask you why, which is pourquoi. Pourquoi means why, why you like it. And you have to say, 
whenever they, you hear the word pourquoi, it, it means they're asking you why, the question why. So you say, j'aime les sciences, I like sciences, car c'est, because it is, intéressant, it's interesting, utile, useful, et amusant, which is fun. Okay, so you can use these adjectives. You know, if you use so many adjectives, they might think that, wow, fantastic, they know so many adjectives. And this is just checking your, you know, assessing and checking your vocabulary, your grammar and all that. So it's good to use more adjectives while you're in your speaking skills. Okay, while you're doing your speaking skills. Um, so, but if in case they see a subject and you don't like it, and you want to be truthful, you can always say, no, je n'aime pas, je n'aime pas, which means I don't like les sciences. No, je n'aime pas les sciences. No, I don't like sciences. But of course, they will ask you why again, pourquoi. For that, you could say maybe it's boring or difficult or not useful. So if you want to say not useful, it means inutile, inutile. If you want to say um, it's really not good, kind of, it's nothing, then you can say nul, nul. But if you want to say it's boring, you can say ennuyeux, ennuyeux. Or if you want to say it is, what else can I say? Ah, oh, difficult. If you want to say it's difficult, you can say difficile, difficile, difficile. Okay? But if you want to say any subject is, school subject is easy, then you have to say facile. Keep that in mind. Okay? Well, now that we've completed this, let's move on to the next one. Let's talk about music now. Tu fais de la musique, which means, do you do some music? So your answer should be either oui ou non. So if you do it, you could always say oui. Oui, je fais de la guitare et du piano, which means, yes, I do, uh, I play guitar and, you know, piano. Um, so if you want to say anything else, you could take examples from here. In this picture, you can see different musical instruments like de la batterie, du piano, du saxophone, de la flute, avec de la flute. Uh, you don't have to confuse yourself in here. You just say de la flute if you play flute. De la trompette, for trompette. Then de la guitare, du violoncelle, which is um, cello. And then you could say du violon, which is violin. Uh, so you can use any of these uh, musical instruments to answer your question. The next question is, Quel est ton instrument de musique préféré? Which means, uh, which musical instrument do you prefer? So here you could say, je préfère, and then you could use any of these instruments from the picture that you see to say. Qu'est-ce que tu fais après l'école? What do you do after school? You can say that you're playing any of these um instruments or you can even say any sports activity that you're doing like a je fais um, sorry je joue au football je joue au cricket je joue au tennis so it's up to you to say any of the sports activities even you could say i do swimming je fais de la natation so these kind of answers you could give um then the next one is qu'est-ce que tu fais le weekend so what do you do in the weekend so you can either say you do something or you play something so if you're saying for example i play um violin then you could say uh je joue du violon and if you're doing probably gymnastic or, or something like that then you could say je fais de la gymnastique or you want to say just sports activity that you do, not to mention the sports activity, then you could always say should be um, to sport. It's it's up to you, whatever you want to say. Okay. And what else? Let's move on to the next one. 